Hello and welcome back. The 48th Annual Conference of Endocrine Society of India welcomes you to ESECON 2018. Well, this particular conversation is going to be very, very insightful and informative as we have with us Dr. R. V. Jayakumar, one of the senior most endocrinologist of our nation. Sir is with us right here. A very good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. How are you doing? Oh, sir, <laughs> getting on as usual. Yeah, Esicon 2018 is right here and uh, we just uh, rightly mentioned one of the senior most. So let's talk about the journey, let's talk about evolution of endocrinology in India. How has been this experience so far, decades of experience, rich experience I'm sure, so we'll have a lot of information to share with the audience. Yes, yeah, surely. Uh, when I took up endocrinology in uh, 1975, I, uh, there was only one, one institute in India which conducts DM course in endocrinology, that was PGI Chandigarh. And I joined there in 75 and I was the fifth candidate in India to do that. And uh, I passed out in 77 December and after that uh, around now 41 years of experience. Uh, I have been in, uh, working in general medicine for some time, then I took up the post of uh, endocrinology then uh, started the Department of Endocology at Amruta Institute of yeah. uh, Medical Sciences at Cochin. It first started with the Depend B in Endocology training, then started DM course. Now it is now 10 years old uh, DM course there in uh, uh, Amruta Institute of uh, Diabetes. I just recently left after uh, completing <laughs> the age yeah. bar for MCA process. So uh, it has been a nice experience. I conducted the first, uh, uh, one of the first in Kerala ESICON in 1996, uh, wow. be, uh, before Lekno. After that it was Lekno uh, in SCPGA. I conducted in Cochin and you can imagine uh, yeah, in 95 how many uh, delegates were there, around, hardly around 200 people and there was not many companies to sponsor the program. And people are asking when you say we are an endocrinologist, what is this specialty? Is it to do with some postpartum, some criminal uh, <laughs> medicine or something like this, endocrinology? Yeah. So now it has all changed. Yes. Now you can see the vibrant mood, the halls are full of uh, flooding with the uh, delegates and number of pharma companies uh, taking care of it. Good old days, nobody knows what it endocrinology is and yeah. nobody uh, is willing to sponsor any program for the hormones. But now the whole situation has changed. Certainly. Uh, so, sir rightly mentioned he's been the former HOD at Amartya Institute of Medical Science. Uh, with that, he is also the senior consultant at Astor Medicity and director and CEO at Indian Institute of Diabetics, Government of Kerala. Sir, having said that, the rich experience that you hold and the current new advances that uh, the Department of Endocrinology has. What is that one, uh, not one, but a couple of things that you would like to address to our young physicians and aspiring endocrinologists? Yes, um, I think practicing endocrinology was much more easier in good old days because you take the case of diabetes, only two drugs, eh? one, uh, only one insulin, that is all. But now the situation has changed. Now the practicing endocrinology is a re really a personalized art and science. You have to see the patient individually, make assessment of so many things before you de decide which drug to choose. Because we have got a now even treating diabetes, we have got a, at least a, uh, six to eight types of drugs at your market. Yes. So you let him, uh, the doctor has to make a decision which one for this given patient in front of you. And that is called personalized medicine. That is you see the patient as a whole, make a decision which is the best one of the available thing, which is going to work for this guy and which is going to be useful for him. So the, the responsibility uh, of uh, treating a di a diabetic and all the endocrine diseases has gone up now because uh, the availability of more facilities, more investigations and more uh, tracks at your fingertip. And that we must uh, thank the research organization, pharma researchers are coming out with new products every year. So that we have got our armamentarium yeah. of treating patients is increasing. We have got a lot to select from it. But it also puts a little strain on the doctors to select which one. Good old days, it was easy. It only one drug is available, you give that drug. Now, no, you have to put your uh, brain a little bit, tax your brain and make a decision which is good for the patient. And if it is going to be successful, the patient will be lifelong 
thankful to you for giving the correct medicine for him. Absolutely, absolutely. Also, sir, we are talking about uh, quick tips. So let us have a few more for our young ones out there from the rich experience that you share with us here. Today. No, I think uh, the one thing, uh, especially coming to diabetes part, which is a, uh, f more than 50% of the endocrine problems is diabetes later on. Yeah. The one thing is you look, uh, I, my only request to my youngsters is that do, uh, see the patient as a whole. Just don't look at the values of just blood sugar values and start treatment. You see the patient as a whole, see his physically, uh, see his uh, financial background, his social background, the psychological aspect of how he is going to be behave with you, is he going to uh, shop from one uh, shop to another. So make all these decision uh, things before you make a decision, that is the one thing. Uh, my uh, one tip is that uh, give a good importance to your lifestyle changes. You always tell your patients, uh, and there is no fasting and no feasting for a diabetic patient. Neither he should take fast, uh, so-called religious or uh, non-religious fast, or he should not go for a feast uh, for a Diwali or Christmas or anything. But if follow a medium lifestyle. That is uh, for a um, patient once you become a diabetic, you have to have a little more discipline and uh, enjoy, uh, keep your all the enjoyment. A uh, little bit subtle and uh, give top priority, uh, you request the patient to give it his disease which is going to affect him lifelong. Right, surely this also has uh, things to do with lifestyle management yes. uh, that is concerned when we look at diabetes as whole. But along with that, to, when it comes to the elderly, there's different aspects to how the treatment goes about. So would you like to uh, add something on this? Yes, uh, you have to re respect the age of the patient also and his service and uh, his life expectancy. So uh, don't be so strict uh, with an elderly man. See, suppose my uncle is around uh, 70 plus and he is diabetic and uh, Christmas is coming and don't be so strict with him. Let him have a uh, piece of cake. After all, uh, that one piece of cake is not going to matter much. Second thing is, uh, he may go, uh, be not be so strict as uh, an extra 40. You must stress the point that if you are in 40s or 50s, you must be very strict with the diabetic control. But when it is 70 plus and 80, he can be a little more relaxed and have a little... See, even all the organizations agree that uh, people above 70, uh, 75, the hemoglobin A1C can be a little on the 7.5 uh, 7 to 8 range because we have to take into consideration this experience and all those things. And uh, his quality of life, you cannot put him to a very strict lifestyle because uh, whatever little comfort he wants to have, he can have in a limited way. So you must be a little more liberal, little liberal with your elderly uh, patients and give him the due respect to the age. Wow, this has been so in insightful coming from our senior most uh, member here at the Endocrine Society of India, SECON 2018. So what are you looking forward to from this vast extravaganza? Any particular area of interest, topic of interest that you are literally here for? No, I think I told you the good old days, the endocrinology was a small subject, but it is now fastly increasing. So even uh, attending the sessions, I am hearing something new yes. about this. And we are trying to, I am trying to see where I can incorporate in my day-to-day uh, -day practice and give that benefit of my extra knowledge to my uh, suffering uh, patients so that he will, his life will be better. So I think uh, you don't, uh, just because you are senior and all, don't stop going to the conference. You must go, see, enjoy, learn and even at any age, uh, the, the life of a doctor is that you go on learning till you practice. You are not going to, so yeah. you go on, uh, go to all the conferences, attend and at least get some points and see whether how you can apply to your uh, practice uh, so that the patient will be benefited. So I am uh, really happy that uh, I am able to grasp few new points after coming here. Uh, and so are we. We are very happy and privileged to have you here on ESI TV that we are sharing current news, updates, opinions and uh, clinical developments from ESICON 2018. Thank you so much, sir, for joining in with us. Thank you. Thank you.